Welcome to the latest episode of the Make and Market podcast. I'm delighted to be joined today by Sam Bainham. So Sam's the Managing Director at Connect Portal. Thanks very much, Sam. <laughs> so um, first of all, could you just provide an overview of the Connect Portal and almost like your aim for what you're looking to achieve in the manufacturing industry? Um, so the easiest way to describe it is kind of two phases. It's the way that I'm positioning it at the moment. So phase one is very much what we're doing at the moment. Phase two is very much our aim, ultimately. Um, so we're working to connect, better connect the manufacturing sector by building a uh, community of manufacturers, engineers, designers, creative people that actually want to collaborate and want to work together. Um, so we support them through a series of events. Uh, we've got an online platform. We encourage them to uh, collaborate and work together, basically. As you'll notice through this podcast i will probably say the word collaborate about 50 times um but it is the kind of key driving ethos behind what we're doing it's not a massive group of members because we want to make sure the community that we're building is very much of the right ethos rather than just going big on numbers and getting tens of thousands of members and you know having a directory and not a lot else we want to make sure that we're opening doors for our members to add value so it's all about connections, collaboration, building relationships and getting to know one another and therefore ultimately supporting each other. Yeah. Um, so we do about three or four events a month, um, a mix of online, in person, um, support them through any project needs that they've got. So if they're looking for new suppliers or they're looking for new partners on projects or whatever it may be, um, and we can help them through that, which is therefore you know supporting them as a business looking for new, um, new business. Um, and then... We do a couple of in-person events yeah. as well. Ultimately, again, to get them talking, get them meeting, get them get them out there, get them in the industry. Um, we like to do these in-person events at interesting venues as well. So it's not all hotels, not all golf clubs. It's yeah. it's somewhere where the creative industry can actually be creative and see what's going on. Oh, really? um, so so yeah. So we've facilitated them at a few catapults. We've had some uh, a little members meet at the MTC Coventry. We've had. One at the Composite Centre, various science park, various member venues as well. They've opened the doors and we've had a little tour and look around amongst the networking. Um, and yeah, our online platform is a bit of a safe space for them to connect, ask each other questions, mm -hmm. problem solve together, um, and ultimately support one another. Um, and then moving forward, because it's not about the numbers, it's you know it's never going to be in the thousands because that doesn't fit the kind of model we're trying to create. It's you know quite a unique relatively small group there's 160 at the moment so i say small it's not that small yeah, but comparatively, comparatively to, to some other kind of organizations trade bodies and stuff um phase two is very much around implementing more projects mm -hmm. so working together as kind of small consortiums or small groups to actually um apply for be it bids um funding opportunities work with the larger organizations the primes tier ones whoever it may be that are looking to connect with more smes um ultimately filter some of those projects into our network into our community because we feel by bringing them together in a kind of collaborative nature they're better placed to then support some of these wider projects because they're already working together mm -hmm. they're already building that relate bit like working relationship between one another so it makes sense to then put them in front of people that are looking for that yeah i really like that almost reluctance because for, I, I guess that there can almost be a sense of you know giving into if the, if the huge demands there then a lot of people would kind of like yeah. go with it but I, I quite like the fact that it you know it is you know small scale um, mm -hmm. it in you know, the because otherwise it, it kind of dilutes the, exactly. the effectiveness I see how the trade bodies have grown and I see why they've got their place and they work very closely with governments and lobbying and that sort of thing and that's great to the sector the more people aware of what's going on in the sector you know the, the better it is for all of us ultimately but i'm not trying to compete with those guys like i will happily partner with them i'll happily work with them i'll happily you know work on projects together but ultimately we're a completely different style of business it's, mm -hmm. it's not the same as far as i'm aware ours is more of a project focus we want to bring more projects into the uk yeah. bring more projects into the industry and ultimately support those smes that we work with so if um so just so i can kind of get my head around um the almost like the the function of how it works so if um a manufacturer wanted to be part of um the portal like how does that work from almost like the inquiry stage to being part 
of the community. Um, so a lot of our kind of onboarding, if you like, is done through referrals, word of mouth. I'm, as you'll know, very active on LinkedIn. I speak to a lot of people on a daily basis on LinkedIn. Um, and it's about having that initial conversation. So whether that is just a message on LinkedIn, whether it's at a trade show, whether it's at an event, whether it's at another networking group, whatever it may be, um, we make that initial introduction. Um, it's quite easy to identify if someone is a good fit for the group. Um, a, if they're on an online meeting in the first instance, they're obviously a bit more open to those sorts of discussions. So that's a quite a good starting point. Um, but then if they, you know, they understand the ethos, they've come along to some meetings, they've started to build those relationships for us. It's that kind of familiar uh, familiarity, building familiar connections, attending two or three events, so you actually start to get to know each other quite well, rather than just doing one event here or there, different meetings, different venues. You don't really build that kind of trust. Whereas if people are constantly engaging, constantly supporting, you start to build quite a good relationship with one another. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what we're trying to encourage through these online meetings, getting connecting people. Um, and yeah, the onboarding process is as simple as signing up on the website and it's a couple of simple forms. We then book a call with them to do a bit more of a deep dive because ultimately we are then a additional resource, additional marketing tool, additional sales arm for them as their business. So it's then down to us to learn as much as we possibly can about them. So when we're out and about, when we're at meetings, we can best represent them ultimately at these sorts of um trade shows exhibitions whatever it may be because you know we want to make sure our members are getting access to the wealth of work that's actually out there yeah 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 absolutely so uh, how does being part of the manufacturing community um such as you know, the connects portal um support marketing efforts for companies in the sector and how is that facilitated within the platform um so we like to treat the the kind of conversations on our uh, online platform very much um, around kind of this kind of safe space, this family feel, this we are there to help one another. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is actually done between the, the businesses that are engaging on that. Mm -hmm. um, we try and encourage them to actually reach out and ask for help when they need it, uh, which is quite rare, I feel, to actually see in companies say, well, I've got a challenge here, I'm trying to find more work, I'm need to rebrand, I need to look at my website, I need to do all of this sort of thing. Who can I reach out to? Who can I ask for help? How can I actually get that support that I need? Mm -hmm. um, and it works quite nicely in that our online platform is not about sales. We don't have people pitching in there continuously saying, I've got this service, I do this, I do this, I do this, because then that that's all it becomes. Yeah. You know, there's a, don't know what the percentage is, but there's probably a very high percentage on LinkedIn and traditional social media, which is just all sales posts. Yeah. Um, so we don't encourage that at all. It's more around that ask for help when you need it. If you're looking for you know, a new marketing tool or you're looking for support in existing systems that you already apply, then the group is there to help. Um, and ultimately what goes around comes around. So we know that if you're there to help someone else, they're always going to, again, build that relationship with you, get to know you and potentially bring something back to you in the future. Yeah, oh, great. And that's what we're trying to encourage the yeah. group. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I guess like the one of the main um, benefits of being part of that you know community approach, um, as you say, it's a great way to kind of gain different of various perspectives and almost like overcome challenges that manufacturers may be facing. Um, what specific or unique challenges um, have you seen that manufacturing companies are facing in today's market? Go on. <laughs> Go on. Like I said before, we've got no uh, time constraints. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, I would go, I'll give you a top three. Energy is big. Um, uh, there, there is a, it's a, it's not just manufacturing. It's a constant uh, issue within wider business, wider, you know, just general, um, general life. There's a, there's always a issue here or there around energy and, <laughs> Um, you know, various things going on in the world are not going to help that. So it's around, okay, coming together with ideas. We've actually just done a couple of events last week around kind of sustainability and looking at your current systems and how they can be supported. So again, it's just presenting ideas, having an open discussion with the group and seeing what, what things are out there, what already exists. People have tried and, you know, potentially failed some of these ideas, but they're out there. 
they don't other man, other members other manufacturers don't necessarily have to follow the same path that others have gone if it hasn't worked on the other side of it there's some very good success stories out there and how they've kind of um tested essentially their manufacturing premises how they can see you know read a lot of these kind of energy um data tracking tools they know which ones work they know how they work they can do a kind of cost analysis and actually see where these kind of savings are and what they have to tweak within their with their kind of internal setup to make those changes so again comes back to the whole collaboration community help each other if someone's been through a process with a certain supplier to support the the energy side of things then let's share it and actually help the rest of the group as well rather than going it alone so that's quite a big one uh it's it's not going to be a quick solution it's going to take time to work out the best ways to support one another um skills big skills issue in the sector uh encouraging talent encouraging the younger generation into the sector is a is a big challenge and a kind of cross between government support there is government support whether it's in the right places and who they're supporting is a question i'm not going to go too far into that because i'll be here all day uh, and general perception of the industry and general uh kind of media coverage of the manufacturing sector one of the most thriving one of the most resilient one of the best sectors out there in terms of what it provides for the economy we're the eighth largest manufacturing nation in the world mm. yet you walk down the street out here and you talk to someone in the general public what what do we manufacture in the uk and they'll say nothing mm. there's no such thing as manufacturing in the uk mm. and it's just that perception because it's not picked up in mainstream media yeah. it's not it's picked up by companies who are very much within manufacturing already so mm. it's almost like this echo chamber of all sharing great things with manufacturing but for some reason it doesn't break that bubble mm -hmm. and that's what we've got to try and do more of so more people are actually aware of some of the brilliant things that yeah the sector are actually up to yeah and that's not just the connex members obviously I'm going to be biased and say that they're brilliant and they're doing brilliant things but general manufacturing everywhere in the uk is from what i can hear everyone is busy mm -hmm. but everyone is struggling struggling to fill skills yeah so mix of those i would say yeah yeah and i guess that kind of leads into my next question really the whole that you know attracting what's like the you know, if i wanted you know, a better way of putting it almost like the the next generation of manufacturers um so um i just want to get this right so i'm going to check my notes so in 2023 um the total manufacturing employment numbers for quarter one they fell to 2.75 million so which was 10 percent lower than pre-pandemic levels um how can or how does um can the connect portal support manufacturers in a, attracting talent to their respective companies and almost like or how you know what yeah i guess like what kind of like processes you know, does it put in place or support does it offer to um, not necessarily just for the younger people, um, I guess, uh, for anyone uh, looking to break into manufacturing. Again, there are two sides to this. Yeah. Manufacturers can do everything they possibly can to get into the, uh, the schools, the colleges, the younger generation. But if it isn't reciprocated from the education side, then we're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. So it's got to be, you know, both sides have got to be fighting for this together. Mm -hmm. Need to encourage teachers need to encourage parents, need to, you know, back to what I was saying around general media, general public around what manufacturing is, mm -hmm. they need to be aware of it so then they can pass it down to the, the students they're essentially teaching mm -hmm. as a first point of call. Um, so, yeah, generally building more awareness in the general public will then hopefully filter that down. From a manufacturing point of view, it's not hard to engage with a local school. You know, there's probably a school within a few miles of your facility pick up the phone go and speak to them and say can i you know, do you want to bring your students here or do you want me to come in and do a talk and they'll yeah. bite your hand off yeah. without a doubt they'll bite your hand off we actually went to a school down in certain coalfield week before last mm -hmm. took five six of our members to the school had another seven on a zoom call we had 11 i think it was 11 or 12 girls from 11 to 13 came into the room and we just had a honest open discussion with them told them a little bit around manufacturing told them the opportunities told them what it was and they all left the room like completely changed like their perception of the sector mm. they didn't have a clue the first question we asked them was do you know what manufacturing is yeah and they're like no mm -hmm. 
and then left the room having like 3D printed parts, having demos on scanners. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know this existed. Yeah. And it's not just that get your hands dirty, hands on environment, which has the perception. It's any role that you can possibly consider has a place in manufacturing. Yeah. If you're interested in sales, there's a sales role in manufacturing. If yeah. you're interested in marketing, there's marketing role. If you're interested in like digital media and design, there's manufacturing is crying out for it. Mm. So there's so many roles within the sector that you know people don't necessarily appreciate. Yeah. Um, so that's hopefully something that we can encourage a little bit more of, and I'm keen to invite more schools to some of our events and yeah. just come try and spread the word. But a group of 160 manufacturers is yes, it will make a dent, but it won't do enough. As yeah, I guess yeah, I guess it kind of like um, <clears throat> excuse me, boils down to trying to almost like shake a stereotype, really, isn't it? Um, I mean, I've got Boy, to go crazy, yeah. dirty. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got to be honest, I've been guilty of it myself before I started working with Axon Garside. Like, we've got obviously a big focus on the manufacturing industry. And um, I've learned so much since I started working here um, just over, or just coming up to a year ago. Um, and I think that, as you say, it's just about challenging almost those perceptions and opening people's eyes a little bit. Um, and yeah, you know, we're making people realise that it isn't, you know, all grease yeah. and uh, grease and, and dirt. Not gonna, <laughs> it's not. It's not for everyone. Yeah. But if you can go into a school and encourage two or three students uh, into the sector that were never even considering it, yeah, then that's a win as far as I'm aware. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, we like to invite as many schools as we can to trade shows, exhibitions. Mm -hmm. We we exhibit at advanced engineering every year. Um, in the last two years, we've invited a group of students to come and have a look around with us. Mm. So it's not just them walking into the hall and being like, I don't know what's going on. It's so uh, you can actually have a guided tour with us. We'll take you to some of our members and have a bit of a chat with them and yeah. learn for yourselves and then have a look around because trade shows are a pretty good place to see what the sector's like, yeah. I would say. Well, so um, I'm going to throw one of your quotes your way. <laughs> and uh, so... Um, You've previously said uh, manufacturing companies have continue, continue to show resilience to the toughest of challenges. Mm -hmm. How does a community-led approach help manufacturing companies overcome obstacles, but more importantly, improve practices moving forward? Give them a sp safe space. Mm -hmm. Short answer. <laughs> yeah. As I say, they're collaborating, they're working together, they're building relationships, they're getting to know each other. Therefore, they naturally ask for help when they need it. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that maybe as a nation, we're not very good at asking for help when we need it. Mm -hmm. And that's what this kind of piecing together of community is is trying to do. Mm -hmm. um, when there is a challenge out there, we can solve it together rather than trying to do it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw manufacturers, I wonder how long we'll be dwelling on this, but you saw manufacturers all come together during COVID. Yeah. Um, various challenges, masks, ventilators, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Manufacturers took it amongst themselves to come together, form consortiums and actually solve some of these problems. Mm -hmm. um, so we we know we can do it. Yeah. Um, it's, again, it's just a case of actually coming together and sharing that best practice and sharing that knowledge to lift the sector as a whole, not just lots of individuals. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to do with this kind of community feel. Yeah, yeah. And just looking at some of those uh, methods, like almost what are some of the most effective ways that you've seen manufacturers um, go about adopting and facilitating collaboration and communication in the companies? We work with a team of service providers as well. Yeah. So it's not just around manufacturer to manufacturer, I need help on this certain project. Mm -hmm. It's I'm trying to grow my business and I'm very aware that I don't have someone in my business that's an expert in marketing or web building or whatever it may be and it's that kind of knowledge that the entire group brings so obviously yes we're 160 companies but that equates to about 250 users so that's individuals each of those users is probably connected to a minimum 500 a thousand people on linkedin or other mm -hmm. platforms or other suppliers within their network and suddenly you piece together a massive web of a very very strong network ultimately mm. um, and that's yeah again what we're trying to encourage ask yeah 
look for opportunity. There's plenty of opportunity out there. If you're struggling to fill some skills or fill some, um, you know, fill a gap in your workforce, mm-hmm. let's ask some other manufacturers and see how they've gone about doing it. Yeah. Um, we've had a discussion recently around premises sharing as well, because it's getting more and more expensive to have your own premises. Yeah. Why not let's come together and actually try and share some premises together? Personally, I work out of a, a small office in, in Bristol City Centre. I would jump at the opportunity to go and work in a local manufacturer. Mm. It gets me in and around manufacturing a bit more. I, I am a mechanical engineer by trade, so it is my background anyway. But to be in and around that every day rather than just a general kind of business community yeah. would completely change the outlook and the mindset and they could call on me for ideas and support and things like that as well. So I'm trying to encourage a little bit more of that, more of that. so freelancers that are you know, designing products every day, but they're just sat in an office in their house. Why not go and work out of an office in a manufacturing facility and actually encourage that collaboration a little bit more? Yeah. Um, so that's something that we're working on, trying to get some of our larger members to open their space for some of the smaller members and yeah. openly support each other. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and how do you see the role of traditional marketing methods evolving in the manufacturing sector amidst the rise of digital? There's a lot of noise and there's a lot going on in both traditional and digital marketing, isn't there? And it's around finding the best way to stand out, I would say. Mm -hmm. Some manufacturers fit traditional marketing because their target audience is reading traditional marketing. So it makes sense to do that. But then there's obviously this new generation which everything is done online. And everything is done through digital marketing and it's how we kind of cross over both of those kind of platforms um because manufacturing is still this there's still this kind of shift towards digitalization some companies are way down the digital journey and they're mm-hmm. like flying mm-hmm. brilliant but some are still very very far behind uh they're aware of it but to be honest they're too busy they don't have time they don't have the resource to actually move these things forward so it's how you kind of cross over and how you encourage people along that journey yeah is that kind of what you're finding as well from your side of things yeah 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 i think that um from our perspective it's almost a case of encouraging companies to just break the mold and try new things um so from my perspective um like i'm the content manager here at and garside and um there are so many opportunities to develop and share like really informative content like you know but, I mean, we've spoke to so many people who um are almost stuck in the era of oh well you know we've you know we've all of our contents in like a magazine or whatever um and you know we're quite happy with it and we've had to kind of like twist our arm a little bit to convince them to to you know put out you know blogs on the on the website you know start a podcast for instance download engineers insight yeah download yeah engineers insight yeah not to tom um moving things on like away from print uh, it's almost like oh like it, it, it's like the kryptonite of the manufacturing mm-hmm. industry like to move away from from print and um, from you know print media and um, but um but you got to think about the future generation as well. Yeah. Going back to the whole skills gap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You find me a teenager that reads a magazine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It it's, doesn't happen. No, it doesn't. So it's video, TikTok, all of that stuff that needs to be more of a present. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, um, you know, it's funny you should say that, you know, social media marketing. You know, there's so many platforms that manufacturers can leverage and take advantage of, you know, whether it's LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, or, you know, X or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, there is a space i think uh, for uh, for tiktok outside of you know kids flossing and you know this that you know this that and the other you know for for an industry that relies so much on you know product dem- you know, your product demonstrations and so on and so forth you know there are manufacturers don't necessarily realize how impressive some of the stuff they're doing is yeah you could go into a manufacturer and take a quick video and say this is like incredible like mm-hmm. what you're doing here is amazing and they'll look at it and be like that's not yeah i do that every day it's yeah. boring but yeah. I have it. like that stuff is the the key ingredient to encourage some of these this kind of generation into it and we all know as soon as this current generation kind of do feed their way into manufacturing and they do start to do some of this online media there's going to be companies that do get left behind yeah because there'll be this new wave of 
online manufacturing essentially yeah and when that starts to take off then there's going to be some companies that are left because mm. they haven't picked up on it yeah in time, ultimately yeah i mean even things like you know you know trade presentations and so on and so forth um you know why travel or, or confine your your reach to i don't know birmingham nec ask people to like track down to birmingham nec when you can um you you can literally host a webinar on linkedin or you know, you can um you, you, everything can be done virtually you know i, I, I appreciate that obviously there is that there's almost room you know there's a time and a place yeah, to you'll never lose that human to human no 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 i don't no. want to lose that no 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 not there's, always, right. there's yeah. always a place for it Absolutely. but it's yeah. almost knitting in yeah some of these other things factory tours virtual factory tours yeah. 3d scans mm -hmm. virtual reality tours all of that sort of thing yeah. could so easily be integrated into existing manufacturing facilities yeah I'm going to shout out another member. <laughs> if you go onto the Bedford CNC website, we've just done a 3D scan of their facility. Yeah. So you can now go on their website and you can actually have a walk around their unit down in Bedford, which is what four or five hours from here. Mm -hmm. it's unlikely that you'll be trekking down that way. So you can actually go and have a look at his facility yeah. right now, um, which is massive for, for potential kind of prospects and new yeah. clients. Yeah. They know where their parts are going to be machined and they can literally go on that website, see existing things that he's machined and therefore why would you not want to work with someone that's of that kind of digital age already? Yeah. It just opens up his kind of um, boundaries a little bit more rather than just those driving past and mm -hmm. seeing the sign and think, oh yeah, I'll go pop in and have a look. Yeah. More of a, anyone can now find him and see what they're doing. We'll give him a plug. Uh, Who is he? Yeah. <laughs> That's Andy Sues from uh, Bedford CNC. Right, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we can add that on the link somewhere. So yeah, yeah we'll pop it in the, uh, that, it in the uh, description. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So in terms of um, automation in um, manufacturing, what benefits can automation like bring to the marketing processes in the industry? Everyone gets scared of automation. Everyone thinks it's taking our jobs and, you know, we're going to be replaced by robots and <laughs> all this sort of thing. And that's just slightly wild thinking, in my opinion, anyway. Um, the real value is the, the efficiency it brings to the business, the productivity. If there is this skills gap, the more companies that can automate their processes, the less they're going to feel the impact of the skills gap. Mm -hmm. It's not to replace jobs, it's to support your existing workforce, ultimately. Um, and it just makes things more efficient. It's the same as AI. Like it's not going to replace what we're doing. It's going to support yeah. ultimately what we're doing and some of those tools. Um, you, know, you can take someone off of a machine or take you know reduce their hours on the machine because they only need to go and inspect it every few hours, but you suddenly now freed up two hours of someone's time to do something else within the business. They can suddenly be managing three or four machines rather yeah. than just the one. Mm -hmm. So there's huge benefits to actually automating and starting again, starting that process. I know it's a, we're not saying everyone has to get from here to here within two days, yeah. you know, as long as you've got that kind of goal in mind and then just step back and work, work your way through it step by step. There's plenty of low hanging fruit out there. There's plenty of software. There's plenty of tools that can support you along that journey. Mm -hmm. And it's just, ultimately getting started a little bit at a time um, and I believe that's going to massively help. Well then uh, kind of taking a step back to what we were talking about before with traditional and digital, <clears throat> how can manufacturers almost like ensure the balance between um, between the two? Um, I know that we were saying before that um, you know with the example uh, with the uh, in-person mm -hmm. um, you know, in events and you know, webinars and so on and so forth you still want that human element to, to things. Yeah. Um, how can um, get how can we strike the balance and make sure that we're not leaning too much mm. one or the other? Find your tribe, essentially. Yeah. Find the group that's right for you. Find the community. Mm -hmm. Hopefully Connex. Mm -hmm. uh, but if not, there's plenty of others out there. Find the group that fits your ethos, fits how you're working, mm -hmm. and really start to work together and support one another. Um there's obviously a balance that needs to be found, but there's so many people that take this media in through through different fields. So it's finding what's right for your business. And you could be a CNC manufacturer working just for form, uh, F1 companies. Therefore, you need to find out where these F1 companies are hanging out and how you can actually start to 
best speak to them and best get in front of them could be completely different to the automotive industry. The rest of the automotive industry could be completely different again from aerospace. So it's that little bit of research around where your customers are and where they're, they're you know, where they're best recognized and where you can find them and then really kind of focusing on that as it's different for every business. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to attract talent and you're trying to attract the younger generation, then you probably need to be putting stuff out on TikTok and videos and you know, using some of these platforms. Um, more and more students are picking up LinkedIn and social media and kind of getting involved in this sort of thing. So realizing it is that now essentially digital CV. Yeah. Um, so I see posts quite regularly now saying I'm, I've just started, I've just set up my profile, mm -hmm. connected with a couple of hundred people that I know, but I'm looking for work or support or work experience. So it's just being active on those platforms. Um, and it doesn't need a lot. It's you don't have to be perfect with every post. Mm. You don't have to be perfect with everything that you write. It's it's better having content that shows you're active and shows you're willing to engage yeah. than just leaving it completely blank and not doing it. Everyone's got a phone in the pocket. If you're in a machine and there's something that Obviously, NDAs and IP and all of that is you've got to be very careful, especially in manufacturing. But if you've got a machine tool cutting something with a load of coolant everywhere that you can't see what it is or where it ends up, mm -hmm. snap a photo of it and you know, yeah. put it online if if it's appropriate. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit blurry or there's a you know cut out of the screen or yeah. there's something in the way. It's it's more the the having that presence. I think is more important than trying to make it. Yeah. If you try and make everything perfect, it just becomes your full time job and takes away from the rest of the business. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um almost a, a sense of just taking the plunge, isn't it, really? Um I know that um our managing director, then um, he's um he was saying a few months ago that he you know, he really wanted to try and you know, improve his um output on LinkedIn. He was quite conscious that he wasn't posting as much. Mm -hmm. Um and he just took the plunge. I mean, he absolutely loves LinkedIn. Um, Little videos here and there. Yeah, video yeah. yourself. Yeah. Like. yeah, it goes a long way, doesn't it? Um, just having that face um, as opposed to just your little profile picture um, <laughs> and uh, actually giving people like some sort of taste as to what you what you like. You buy into the person, mm. the day, um, don't you? So, um, no, spot on. Um, and what advice would you give to manufacturing companies who are looking to improve their online presence and digital marketing strategies? So kind of what we've touched on there, really. Yeah. Stay consistent. Mm -hmm. Don't post something at the start of one month and then leave it for six months. Yeah. So even if it's just once every week, once every couple of weeks, put something on there that's interesting. Tell people a story. Yeah. Let people know what you're up to so they can start to believe in your journey as well. Mm -hmm. And that really helps. And I would say start small focus on maybe one or two platforms if you're going to go down the social media route don't try and cover all the bases yeah. try and stay in that kind of you know work out where your potential customers clients you know your market is where you have the best chance of getting traction and best part chance of having that solid voice and just ultimately take the plunge as you say yeah. take that first step it's not as bad as many people make out and it's people think it's scary don't they um it's just you know it doesn't come naturally to everyone i know it's a generational thing as well it's yeah. you know yeah. people were born with phones in their hands and yeah. you know on social media from the start so it's, yeah. it's very different but you'll find other like-minded people if you you know make that plunge and then you'll start to to move this forward that way yeah. be proactive <laughs> um, and could you share some examples of um, successful collaborations or partnerships within your community that have boosted um, marketing efforts for manufacturers? Yeah, of course. Obviously, the project side of things. So we've got you know, CNC manufacturers, metal fabricators, uh, tooling companies, metal uh, plastic forming, you know, those sorts of companies all across the, the platform that are always looking for new projects, new opportunities, ways to collaborate if a innovate bid comes up or another project. Uh, government tender or whatever it may be there's always opportunity to partner up and support one another a lot of those projects are obviously under nda mm -hmm. uh so it's very again a, a difficulty within this sector is a lot of a lot of work is confidential and it has to be kept that way for obvious reasons so it's quite hard to share very very detailed responses you know manufacturers really struggle when you know they're trying to market themselves and they're trying to get out there when they've got 
sensitive content that they can't share then how do they tell other people what they can do without you know that infringing on any of that um so that's always been a been a challenge again for us when we've got companies that we know are working together but we can't use it as a case study because you know they can't even share it to them to each other in some instances so it's it's keeping that um kind of trust there as well for for those sides of things um but we've had various marketing opportunities for members so we've had um i try and try and write an article or a blog on linkedin once a quarter mm. and always tag members and you know yeah. encourage that collaboration every time i'm on the road which is quite a lot mm -hmm. and i'm dropping into member sites i always snap a few pictures and make sure i'm sharing it so people know what's going on and yeah. just kind of spreading the word and sharing that way if i know someone is on the road themselves go and see a client and i'll say well drop into this company they're part of connex then i'm sure they'll be happy to see you mm -hmm. and I just encourage that ultimately opening doors for people to meet one another yeah. um there's a series of articles and interviews running at the moment actually which we've supported um, which is called Three of a Kind. Um, and it's um, a lady called Miranda Birch is writing those. Um, and she's basically interviewing three people from three different backgrounds, but have essentially found themselves in similar roles. So completely different companies, but how they've gone around their journey of essentially ending up in a very similar position and where they've all come from. Mm -hmm. And that's quite interesting. And again, that's a free opportunity for our members. They've had that. I've posted that opportunity and they've, a few of them have jumped on it. So they've had one, uh, which was released last week around continuous improvement, um, and those sorts of things, which is quite an interesting read. And then I think I'm allowed to say, but the next one coming out is around uh, composite manufacture. And um, so I've had three of our members who are all, um very technical composite kind of engineers and specialists all in their own business all in their own company but have essentially got to the same point but all completely different backgrounds yeah and it's how they've got there in their journey which is quite wow. interesting and that's full of yeah interviews quotes and all sorts of stuff yeah. which is really interesting um we've worked with a few universities um and a few of our members have had the opportunity to pitch presentations to 200 or so students which has been really beneficial to them as a you know kind of sounding board of ideas and that sort of thing um and then we're helping several kind of early stage product developers startups as well mm -hmm. so they're able to join our community if the fit is right and as they're growing their product and their idea they've got a group of people to actually ask and support in that journey um it's <laughs> It's one of the reasons I started Connex because I was working prior to Connex with a lot of ideas people, let's say, inventors, people looking to bring stuff to market. And the biggest challenge was how do I manufacture something? Who do I speak to in the industry that can help? And there's no, there's no kind of go-to resource to actually support that. Mm -hmm. It was always a, well, I know what you need to do because you know, my background, as I say, is engineering. I know, I see the path, I know what you need to do, but now we have to go and contact a load of manufacturers and hope that some of them actually see the vision of the product and take it forward as well. That usually ended up going on Google, finding a list of say 20, 30 companies within a local group, mm -hmm. firing off a load of emails to info at email, mm -hmm. maybe getting one or two responses if you're lucky, and, and that was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I got a little bit frustrated and that was that was where kind of Connex uh, formed. Yeah. Um, so yeah, off the back of that, we like to encourage anyone with these ideas that need that kind of community, need that sounding board, even if they're a little bit more established and they're looking to you know, diversify, bring another product to market, then come have a chat with us and our, our members, I'm sure we'll be happy to help you along that journey as well. So there's a few of those out there as well. Sounds great. Sam, we are on the last well should be the last question i am going to throw in a cheeky like oh, i said i wasn't going to throw in a curveball i'm gonna it's not too bad but uh before that um so looking ahead um what trends do you almost like foresee shaping the future of manufacturing companies and how can they prepare for the changes um obviously sustainability big one yep. uh circular economy net zero those sorts of things uh we had a mastermind session last week um all around this we had four guests come in as hosts and actually support that session. It was really good to see some good engagement and a lot of positivity as well. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all doom and gloom, you know, climate change and all this. It was a, what can we actually do rather than 
jump on a networking call, call and complain about it for an hour. Yeah. What can we actually do together as a group to try and solve some of these things? And it was actually quite insightful and really interesting to kind of take a bit of a backseat, but listen to the conversation, which was really nice to see. So that's quite a big one. And again, along the dig- digitalization journey, it's about taking those first steps rather than just looking at it as a big picture and being like, I'm never going to get there. Mm. Let's step right back and see what you can change very small changes which actually moves you along that journey. So that's quite an interesting one. Digitalization, uh, obviously skills that we've touched on quite a lot, Mm -hmm. Um, younger generation. Bringing new projects back into the UK, reshoring and actually maintaining some of the IP within within the UK and start exporting some of those issues as well, rather than selling them to (laughs) other countries, should we say. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, developing our own tech, developing our our own ideas again and actually really bringing manufacturing back to to where it was previously. We've got some of the best universities in the world. We've got some of the best manufacturers in the world and I think we need to shout about it a little bit more, Mm -hmm. which ultimately should ease some of the other pressures. Um, There's a big time issue, big resource issue. These manufacturers are under massive pressure to get jobs out the door. So the more that we can do to support them the the better the industry is going to become as a whole basically mm. well and last but by no means least um, interesting what's still um for the listeners like what like the key takeaway that you if you could pick like one takeaway from this episode what would you want manufacturers to take away from this shout about how good you are mm. and don't be scared to post a photo online or a video or anything um yeah talk to others in the industry Everyone is very supportive and everyone ultimately wants to support the sector. Mm-hmm. No one wants to see the sector damaged. So best thing we can do is actually shout about it together. Cool. Sam, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks very no much. Worries. Thank you very much for having Thanks. me. Not a problem. Thanks.